Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with setting up a Discord bot project with MongoDB. This is going to be the first step to making our dashboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Slappy and I'm going to use to just generate a quick Discord.js project. You don't have to use Slappy, but I would highly recommend you use a command handler. So, all right, let me paste my bot token and the prefix we're actually just going to ignore. I'm going to do dollar sign, but watch what I'm going to do in just one sec. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up and you can see that my bot token is right over here inside my .env file, as you can see. Okay, but I'm going to get rid of the bot prefix because this bot is going to work on multiple different guilds. It's not going to work on only one guild. And you want to give the opportunity for uh, your users to change the prefix. So that's why you want to get rid of this. If you don't want to have a custom prefix, you can leave this here, but we're going to get rid of that. And now one thing that I'm also going to do is we're going to go right over here and we're going to get rid of client.prefix. We're going to get rid of that. And we are also going to go inside message.js. So we're going to have to change up some stuff over here real quick because we're integrating a database. Okay, so before I do anything else, we can just do npm i mongoose. So we're going to install mongoose and you need to make sure you have mongodb installed. This is the official website over here. And you can just download community server. And yeah, it's very easy to install. Okay, I'm using a tool called MongoDB Compass to view my database. So it should be pretty easy. All right, so now that Mongoose is installed, what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder called database. And I'm going to create a new folder called schemas. Because we might have multiple schemas. I'm going to call this guildconfig.js. And what we're going to do is we're going to import Mongoose. And we're going to create our schema. So we're going to first do const guild config schema equals new mongoose.schema and we're going to go ahead and just declare our field so we're going to have the guild id which is important it's going to be a string so schema types that string that's how you give a type for this uh field we're going to say the require it is required and it's going to be unique so that way we don't have multiple documents that have the same guild id you don't want that every guild should have its own guild configuration it should only have one we're going to do prefix type mongoose not schema types and we'll do string as well uh, required is going to be true but the default is going to be whatever default you want we're going to do exclamation mark okay so now these are the two important ones you actually don't need the prefix you will only need the prefix if you want your bot bot uh, prefix to be configured but if you don't then you can just delete this but let's say, for example, if I want my bot to do custom blocking or if I want it to give an auto roll, we're going to make sure we define those fields over here. So let's say, for example, uh, let's do default role and we'll do type. So the type is going to be a string, of course. But what exactly are we going to be saving? We're going to be saving the actual role ID to the database. The required is going to be false because we don't actually necessarily need it. By default, the only two things that should be in the database for this document is the guild ID and the prefix, which is the default one. Later on, the user can actually configure these things on their own with the dashboard. So we'll leave the required as false. And I think we'll do one more. Let's do uh, member log channel. And we'll do type and it's also going to be the same thing just like that and of course you can add more fields uh you can save let's say for example you can save uh the deleted message logging channel if you want to but we're only going to do these two just for simplicity and we can add more later the last thing i'm going to do is simply just do module.exports equals we're going to do mongoose.model this is going to compile down the schema into a model we call it guild config Guild config schema. There we go. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and generate an event. So slappy gen event. And we're going to generate the guild create event. So just generate that. And this guild create event is going to be triggered whenever the bot joins the server. So you want to basically save the guild configuration when the bot first joins the server. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and import guild config from, this should be inside database, schemas, guild config, just like that. And what we want to do is we want to save the configuration to the database. So we're going to simply do const guild config equals await because this is going to return a promise guild config.create and the only thing that we're going to save is the guild id for now because the prefix is going to have the default one okay so guild id maps to guild.id okay and this 
guild object is the actual guild that the bot joined. So if you want to get the ID, you can do guild.id. Okay, and I'm simply just going to do console log bot has joined the server. Uh, save to DB. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a try catch just in case something goes wrong. You can always just handle our errors appropriately. But I'm just going to console log it for now. I'll let you guys uh, use this as a starting point. So the last thing that we need to do is we should, is we need to, okay, so the last thing we need to do is we need to import mongoose inside our bot.js file and we need to connect to our database. So we're going to pass in the mongodb URI. So localhost, this is going to be the IP address of your MongoDB server. So I'm using localhost, I'm going to pass in localhost. If you're using a remote MongoDB server, you're going to have to pass in the actual IP address or domain to that server. Okay, and the port by default is 27017. So if you're using a different port, you have to pass it in. But since we're using the default port, we don't need to pass it in. And I'm just going to call this uh, DJS dashboard just for simplicity. Okay, and we're going to get a couple of deprecation warnings when we run this. That's from MongoDB. And it tells you how to actually uh, solve them. Okay, so I'll just do that real quick. So use new, new parser true, use unified, use. Use unified topology true. Okay, so now we're connected to the database, we're good. So now, let me refresh. You can see we have this DJS dashboard. We have guild configs, but we don't have anything in there. So let's go ahead and get our bot to join my server. So I'm going to go ahead and authorize my bot to join. Uh, let's see, what is this? USA server. So we're going to authorize. We're going to authorize the bots in. Let's look at the logs. Bot has joined the server. Save to DB. If I refresh, you can see that we have our prefix and our guild ID. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, cool. So that's awesome. Now, here's the thing, though. Now, if we actually try to use commands, it's not going to work. Right. I can't use any commands right now because we don't have our prefix uh, loaded up. Okay, now to actually get the prefix, there are a couple ways that you can actually get the prefix. I'm going to do it this way, and I don't recommend you do it this way because like I said, this is supposed to be a simple dashboard tutorial. The correct way that you should do this, well, there's really no correct way. It's how you want to do it. But based on how you do it, it might create performance issues if your bot uh, goes into a bunch of different servers. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to import guild config from uh, the database folder. Okay, and I'm warning you guys right now, and I'm going to explain why you should not do it this way. But I'm only doing it this way just for demonstration purposes only. Okay, so what we're going to do is every single time the message is sent, we are going to just get the prefix from the database. The reason why uh, this is terrible to do is because, let's say, for example, if you're in, a, if your bot is handling so many different servers, you can imagine that there's going to be many different message events that are going to be emitted every single time. So you're going to be executing about, let's say, you're going to be, so you're going to be emitting, a, so you're going to be calling the database like thousands of times per minute, maybe even 10,000 times per minute if your bot is in a lot of guilds. What you should do, and this is going, this is a lot more advanced, okay, so th that's why I don't want to do it in this video. What you should be doing is you should be using a WebSocket because you should be using a WebSocket. And the reason why is because, let's say, for example, if your prefix is updated on the API on the re dashboard part, how is your bot going to know the prefix is updated? Okay, so ideally what I would personally do is I would basically fetch all of the prefixes. Okay, I would set the prefix when the bot first joins the server and I would have a WebSocket connection connecting from the Discord bot to the Express application. So when the Express application updates uh, a value in the database, we're going to send a message through the WebSocket connection from the API server, the Express server to the Discord bot. So if it was a prefix that was updated, uh, our bot will know that the prefix was updated and it can update the cached value of the prefix. Okay. But like I said, uh, that is way too advanced and I don't want to make this super complicated. So what we're going to do is we're just going to call the database every single time whenever we send a message. It's bad, but like I said, we're going to use a WebSocket. Maybe later on in a more advanced tutorial, I'll use a WebSocket. Okay, so we're going to basically say guild config find one and we're going to find, uh, let's see, find one guild ID. So we basically want to find the guild configuration. 
Okay, and we're going to go ahead and do, uh, let's see, message.guild.id. So we're not caching anything at all. Okay, so actually, wait, I'm sorry, this should be a guild config. Okay, and I want to get the prefix, so const prefix equals uh, guild config.get prefix. So that's going to retrieve the actual uh, value from the object that is returned. And then we can simply just do this. We're going to change this up. So instead of client.prefix, we're going to do prefix. Same thing over here. Get rid of that. All right. So now if I save, okay, if I save. Okay, so our bot is logged in. Now if I do test, you can see that our command works. And that's all coming from the database. Now if I were to update this manually in the database, okay, it would still work because it's calling the database. Okay, and it's getting the actual new data. But like I said, in a more advanced scenario, you would want to use a WebSocket to kind of, you would want to use a WebSocket to send messages between the API server to the actual Discord bot. Okay, but I know that seems very complicated, so that's why I don't want to worry so much about that. I don't want to scare you guys too much with a crazy implementation, but just be warned that if your bot is going to be in, let's say, thousands of servers, it's going to use up a lot of resources, so just be warned. Okay, so that's pretty much it for our Discord bot. There's really not much that we're going to really do because right now we are just updating the prefix. Uh, we don't have any other things to update as of yet. That's all going to come from the Express app. But like I said, this is just a simple uh, implementation of our bot. Okay, so in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to create the API server the Express app, and the Express app is going to have several endpoints that's going to allow us to update the prefix, it's going to allow us to update the role, it's going to allow us to update the member lock channel, and again, if we have other fields, we can also add them, but those are the three that are going to be the common ones. We're also going to handle the authentication part of our application, and then in hopefully the third video, hopefully I can make this in a three-part series, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the React app. And then we're going to allow the user to have an interface to uh, manipulate the data from the client. So anyways, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.